When I was very young, I awoke one night, and as I peered out my bedroom window, I watched in awe as a red fox walked by not more than six feet from me. It silently slipped by, illuminated by the moonlight, as it crossed our yard and disappeared into the pine barrens. That was the first time I realized that in the minds of many animals, there is very little separation between what we think of as nature and city or suburb. When I first began tracking wolves, coyotes, and fox, it became very clear to me how much they had to adapt to our urban sprawl. Over the years, I have tracked them in cities and suburbs as much as I have tracked them in the wilderness. Their ability to survive and adapt to the way we've changed the land is amazing. At night, they travel our streets and sidewalks like their relatives in the wild use game trails. They hunt in our suburban lawns and city parks the same way their species hunts glens, forests, and fields. That is why this episode is dedicated toward teaching the difference between wild and domestic canine tracks. With these teachings, you will be able to tell what species of canine uses your backyard or city park, or if wolves or coyotes have lived right under your nose for years. Look at these two tracks closely and see if you can tell the main difference between them. One is the front paw of a domestic dog that is walking, and one is the front track of a wolf that is walking. The first difference I want to draw your attention to is the distance between the rear toe pad and the front toe pad. Now look at the relative direction that all the nails and toes point to. This is one of the most important difference between the front track of a domestic or wild canine. Notice how in the first track, the lines radiate outward, but in track two, they appear to point relatively straight ahead. Track number one is a domestic dog, and track two is a wolf. The reason all the toes and nails point outward on domestic dogs' front track is because they lack the strength to hold all the toes together when the paw makes contact with the ground. Therefore, the front paw just flexes out in different directions as it tries to support the weight of the dog's head and chest. In contrast, a wild canine stays alive by walking and running sometimes many miles a day or night in order to survive. So it quickly develops a strength and muscle tone in its paw that holds its front toes together as it's walking. This is why when a wild canine is walking, all the toes and nails will line up to point forward or even slightly inward. The muscle tone will also cause both sides of a wild canine track to look almost exactly the same. One can draw a line down the middle and see this. The next thing I look for in a wild canine is a raised star pattern in the center of the track. This is caused as the snow or earth is squeezed up between the toes and fills a cavity at the center of the paw, even when they're running, like this wolf track shows. When you're looking at these indicators, you want to focus on the front paw's track because it supports the head, neck, and most of the organs. Because of this extra weight, the front paw shows a muscle tone or lack of muscle tone more clearly. The rear paws support much less weight, so even in a domestic dog, they can very easily hold tightly together like a wild canine. Right now, you may be asking yourself, How do I know if it is a track of a front or rear paw? It is actually quite simple. The larger tracks are made by the front feet because, as mentioned earlier, they support much more of the weight of the animal. The next detail I look for in a wild canine track is sharp nails. A wild canine will typically have very sharp nails from walking on more natural materials. Sometimes, they are worn so sharp that they may only appear as dots in front of the toes, as is the case with this coyote track here. However, if an animal walks on a sidewalk or pavement quite a bit, the nails will become thick and blunt as they are worn down. They will also be thick and blunt if they are clipped with nail clippers. And, if you are seeing overly long and curled nails, It is a sign of a domestic dog that does not get out of the house much and does not get its nails groomed often enough. The final and most reliable way to determine if the tracks you find are wild or domestic 
is to follow it for a while and ask yourself, does it run from place to place wasting energy? Or does it seem to conserve energy, usually walking in a straight line as it travels? Wild canines will tend to conserve their energy because many times they have felt the pains of starvation and learned the hard way that their energy is a very precious resource. In contrast, a domestic dog will tend to ignore this philosophy and instead follows its nose from place to place out of pure curiosity. So remember, when determining if a canine track you find is wild or domestic, look for how tight the nails are to the toe pads. Look at the direction that all the toes and nails point to on the front track to determine the amount of muscle tone. Look for symmetry. In other words, do both sides look the same? Look for the raised star pattern and for sharp nails. And lastly, look at how the trail moves through the landscape to determine if it conserves energy or runs from place to place like a domestic dog. Lastly, after we have tracked wild canines across the US, it has become very apparent that most field guides that have a picture of a wolf or coyote track are no more than an artist's rendition of a wolf or coyote track at best, and certainly don't show what a person wanting to learn to track wild canines will see in the field. So if you want to see a great representation of a wolf track and you're traveling through Yellowstone this year, we actually got this photo from an information kiosk on the forces of the Northern Range Trail, found in the Black-tailed Deer Plateau. This one here is found in a Mammoth Visiting Center and shows a true rendition of a front track from a wolf that is running. Our next episode on tracking will teach how to tell if certain animals are male or female from their tracks. We will then teach how to tell if an animal is pregnant or if it is a male if it is carrying a large or small set of antlers. We hope you enjoyed this episode on tracking and please remember to like, comment and subscribe so that you can continue to learn more. And always remember to get up, get outside and go have an adventure.